What's up guys, welcome back. Now if you got any friends from Maryland, you know they do not play about their crab cakes. Lucky for you, today I'll show you how to make it happen. But before we do that, please take a quick second to subscribe to the channel. Make sure to hit that bell to enable notifications as well. All right guys, the only way to start this party is to talk about the crab meat. Here I have one and a half pounds of lump and jumbo lump crab. This here is blue crab, which is very common in the Chesapeake Bay area, which luckily for me, I live right beside. So if you live in the DMV, DC, Maryland, Virginia area, blue crabs are super popular and they're absolutely delicious. But don't worry guys, if you can't find blue crab, just grab whatever lump or jumbo lump crab you can find at your local store. Costco usually always has it in stock. Next, we're moving on to these saltine crackers. We're gonna use these in place of breadcrumbs. The best way to do this guys is either put it in a food processor or put it in a Ziploc bag like you see here. You gonna make sure you get all of the air out because we're gonna beat the hell out of these crackers and turn them into breadcrumbs. So zip them up, give them the old one, two, throw a couple elbows if you have to, whatever you gotta do. All right, all right, that's enough, Matt. Really guys, the best way to do this is to break out a rolling pin or a mallet. And we're just gonna turn these saltine crackers into breadcrumbs. So just roll that rolling pin back and forth in each direction until all of your crackers are crumbled up nice and fine, like you see here. That's what we're looking for. And that is what we're gonna use as our filler. Very little filler in Maryland style crab cake, so just keep that in mind. We're gonna make our sauce now, guys. We're going in with a half cup of mayonnaise. I prefer Duke's, but you can use whatever mayonnaise you got, whatever you have access to. Then we're going in with some Old Bay hot sauce. If you can't find that, you can use whatever hot sauce you prefer, whatever you have in the pantry. Also need to go in with some Dijon mustard, about a tablespoon of that. Next, we're going in with some sweet pickle juice or sweet relish juice, whatever you got. A few dashes of worst word in the world sauce. And of course, you gotta have some Old Bay. Old Bay is another very common ingredient in my neck of the woods in the Chesapeake area. And then we're going down with some all purpose seasoning. If you haven't tried that yet, you can get yours via the link in my description box. It's just a blend of salt, pepper, garlic, and onion powder. Next, we're going in with about a teaspoon or so of fresh lemon juice. As always, guys, specific measurements and ingredients are provided for you in the description box below, so don't forget to check that out. Break out the whisk and mix to combine all those ingredients. You wanna do this in advance. Make sure you taste as you go and adjust the flavor to your preference. Very important. You wanna taste it before you add your egg. There you go, tastes great. Now we're going in with one egg. Bring that whisk back out and beat that into the mixture and just mix that egg until it's well combined. So far, so good. Now for the fun part, we're going in with the lump crab and the jumbo lump crab. This stuff is super expensive, guys, so when you do this, you don't wanna overwork it because you paid good money for these big lumps of crab meat, so you don't wanna overwork it and break that up. So just get in there with your spatula, be a little careful, fold it in nicely like you see me doing right here but you wanna have those big chunks of crab meat. That's what people wanna see. There we go. Once your crab meat is mixed well into that sauce, we're gonna start adding our saltine cracker breadcrumbs. If you don't have saltine crackers, you can use Ritz or whatever crackers you like. If you don't have any crackers, you can just use regular breadcrumbs. Make sure you season your breadcrumbs though. And then we just wanna fold that in. Don't overwork it. Again, you want to have nice big lumps of crab meat in there. Also, another reminder, all the specific measurements and ingredients are provided for you in the description box below, so don't forget to check that out. Going in with about a half cup to three fourths of a cup of breadcrumbs, depending on how much crab meat you're using. You only wanna use enough breadcrumbs to hold this thing together. You don't wanna to add too many. Next very important step is to pop that into the refrigerator for about 30 minutes. That's gonna help it come together and prevent it from breaking apart when you cook it. And now guys, you're really in for a treat because I'm gonna show you how to make the most delicious homemade tartar sauce you've ever tasted. First things first, we're gonna dice up half of one shallot. If you don't have a shallot, you can use a yellow onion or white onion. Just dice it up real nice and fine. Make sure your knife is nice and sharp and just rock back and forth until you have a nice fine dice on that shallot or onion, whatever you decide to use. I do recommend a shallot for this though, if you can find one. Next, wanna dice up some parsley. You can use flat leaf or curly leaf, doesn't really matter. You wanna dice that up nice and fine as well. Using about a quarter cup of parsley for this, two or three tablespoons maybe. 
Next, we're going in with one tablespoon of capers. You wanna dice that up nice and fine as well. Capers have a nice citrus flavor. If you haven't tried them yet, I highly recommend it. So in a mixing bowl, now we're adding our mayo. We're going in with some sweet relish, going in with those capers, the parsley, the shallots, some fresh lemon zest, and some fresh lemon juice as well. This tartar sauce is fantastic, guys. I'll never make it another way after trying this recipe. Going in with a pinch of white sugar just to balance the acidity, and some all-purpose seasoning, a little salt, pepper, garlic, and onion powder. Break out the whisk and mix to combine. Taste as you go and adjust the flavor to your preference. That is absolutely money, guys. Going in with the rest of the parsley, a little leftover shallot that we had on the cutting board. Mix that in, then we're gonna pop that into the refrigerator. Now, my friends, it's time to make some crab cakes. I'm using a baking sheet here that's lined with foil. I'm gonna spray it a little bit just to make sure the crab cakes don't stick. The oven is preheated to 450 degrees. Typically, these would be broiled, but I like to bake mine first and then broil them to finish. You wanna form the patties in your hand like you see me doing right here. Kind of squeeze them a bit, that way they stay together. You can make them as big or small as you want. I'm actually making a couple smaller ones to show you guys how to make a nice crab cake slider recipe here. Top them off with a little Old Bay seasoning, and then we're gonna pop those in the oven for 12 to 15 minutes at 450 degrees, and then we're gonna finish them under the broiler for two or three minutes to get them nice and brown. During the last five minutes, we're gonna brush them with some melted butter, cause why the hell not? Say it with me guys, looking good. Oh man, quick little money shot for you guys. Nothing like some delicious crab cakes. Make sure you guys tag me on social media when you make these. We're gonna put some bacon in the oven as well. Slice up some tomatoes for our sliders that we're gonna make. However you wanna make your sliders is totally up to you. I'm gonna do basically like a BLT slider. A little bacon, lettuce, tomato. Those are absolutely gorgeous crab cakes fresh out of the oven. We did put them under the broiler to brown them up a little bit for two or three minutes. And you can plate them up just like this for dinner. Two nice sized crab cakes, a little tartar sauce, a little fresh lemon. And that, my friends, is a Maryland style crab cake. You too can now be a snob about your crab cakes. Look at that huge lump of crab meat right there. We're just gonna dunk that right into the tartar sauce, go right for the taste test. I'm tired of waiting. Oh man, that's good. Going back in for another bite, got to. The crab cakes is one of those things I could eat every day. Definitely a fork drop recipe. Here's a little freebie for you guys. I'm gonna show you how to make some sliders since it's football season. Little crab cake sliders for your guests. Although crab cake's pretty expensive, so make sure you like your house guests. Going down with the tartar sauce on both sides. Going down with some bacon, lettuce, of course a slice of tomato. Then we're gonna add that crab cake that's a little bit too big for this bun, but what the hell. Top that off and you have yourselves a beautiful crab cake slider. Gotta go in for the taste test on this one, but not before I give you a trademark money shot. All right guys, moment of truth. I think we know how this is gonna end. This recipe is absolutely money. Let me know what other appetizer recipes you would like to see on the channel. We're gonna do quite a few now that football season is back. If you like the recipe, give your boy a thumbs up. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and that bell to enable notifications. And as always, thank you for your support.